So the idea with Mark one, both Mark one and Mark two, is the new Glenn can uh, carry it from the surface of Earth to the surface of the Moon. Exactly. So uh, the Mark one is expendable. The lunar the, the, the lunar lander we're developing for NASA, the Mark II lander, that's part of uh, the Artemis program. They call it the sustaining lander program. So that lander is designed to be reusable. It can land on the surface of the moon in a, in a single stage configuration and then take off. So the whole the you know the if you look at the Apollo program, the lunar lander in Apollo was really two stages. It would land on the surface, and then it would leave the descent stage on the surface of the moon, and only the ascent stage would go back up into lunar orbit where it would rendezvous with the command module. Here what we're doing is we have a single-stage lunar lander that carries down enough propellant so that it can bring the whole thing back up so that it can be reused over and over. And the point of doing that, of course, is to reduce cost so that you can make lunar missions more affordable over time, which is, that's one of NASA's big objectives because this time, the, the whole point of Artemis is go back to the moon, but this time to stay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, back in the Apollo program, we went to the moon six times and then ended the program, and it really was too expensive to to continue. And so there's a few questions there, but one is how do you stay on the moon? What what ideas do you have about uh yeah like a sustain sustaining life where a few folks can stay there for prolonged periods of time? Well um one of the things we're working on is um using lunar resources like lunar regolith mm -hmm. to manufacture commodities and even solar cells on the surface of the moon. We've already built a solar cell that is completely made from lunar regolith simulant. And this solar cell is only about 7% uh, power efficient. So it's very inefficient compared to you know the more advanced solar cells that we make here on Earth. But if you can figure out how to make a practical solar cell factory that you can land on the surface of the moon. Mm -hmm. And then the raw material for those solar cells is simply lunar regolith. Then you can just, uh, you know, continue to churn out solar cells on the surface of the moon, have lots of power on the surface of the moon. That will make it easier for people to live on the moon. Uh, similarly, we're working on extracting oxygen from lunar regolith. So lunar regolith by weight is has a lot of oxygen in it. It's bound very tightly, you know, in as oxides with other elements. And so it you have to separate the oxygen, which is very energy intensive. So that also could work together with the uh, solar cells. But if you can uh, and then ultimately we may be able to find practical quantities of ice uh, in the permanently shadowed craters on the poles of the moon. And we know there is ice water um, in, in those, uh, or water ice in those craters. And we know that we can break that down uh, with electrolysis into hydrogen and oxygen. And then you'd not only have oxygen, but you'd also have a very good high uh, efficiency propellant uh, fuel in, in hydrogen. So there's a lot the, there's a lot we can do to make the moon more sustainable over time. But the very first step, the thing, the kind of gate that all of that has to go through is we need to be able to land uh, cargo and humans on the surface of the moon at an acceptable cost.